Here I want to talk about a function called offset surface and then just below that variable offset. First offset surface. Now the way this works is you select whatever faces you want to offset. By default it's set to tangent faces so if I select this face you'll notice all faces are selected for the offset and it's just simply moving that tangent set the distance that you need. Now let me reset the menu and select offset. This time I'm going to change this to single face. With single face I can specify one face or a series of faces that I want to offset. Now what this allows me to do is offset all of these same distance. Now what I want you to pay attention to here in the part navigator is that when I go to feature list I'm going to say one feature for all faces. If I select OK you'll notice that this is now one offset surface. You'll note that that option is now gone. So what I'm going to do is undo that. I'm going to go back into the offset, leave it at single face, pick these. If you have several faces that you know you want to offset but you want several features, you can say one feature for each face. And again, this is only available at creation time. So when I select OK, what you'll notice is I get several offset features. I'll go back into my offset surface. I'll say one feature for all faces. I'll select tangent faces. I'll select U to do my offset. If I go to partial result, I can say enable partial offset, dynamically update exclusion list, and these features are basically for when you are doing something a bit more complex. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to show this surface and I'm going to go in and I want to sew these two surfaces together. And the sew surface, here I'll just do like this. I want to sew this to that. Now I'm going to do my offset with these surfaces. So we'll go to offset surface, select, if I just say tangent faces, you'll notice it just picks that one face and that chain. If I pick this as well, you'll notice that I get these errors, these failures. As I offset this out, these faces cannot be offset out to that 40 millimeters. And that's what this partial offset is for. If I turn that off, what you'll notice is that I no longer can do that offset. But with that turned on, what that does is it calculates the faces that it cannot offset, removes those, and offsets the faces that it can automatically. And we have what's called dynamically update exclusion list. So if I move this and put this into another location where some of these faces can now be offset, let's see if I can get that to go. You'll notice that these faces are now added in because this is saying update the exclusion list automatically. So what it does is it runs through all of the checks and verifies that these faces can be offset every single time you make a modification. So if I shrink that even more, I expect maybe another face or two to be part of that list. Okay, maybe not. Let's go to 10. There we go. So these faces are now included automatically and this face is now removed because again it cannot be offset within the parameters I have specified. Now, if I go to settings, you'll notice that I have a tolerance. I can mess with the tolerance. I also have various options for shelf faces. And this is when we get into uh, offsetting um, uh, edge fillets and, and uh, things of that nature where it wants to remove a fillet. But um, very, very powerful tool. It allows you to create offsets even with surfaces that may have bad data. Now, at this point, you may need to go in there uh, and if it's necessary to use this for part of your data, you can go and create a new patch, fill that in, and, and clean that up. Another way, like I said, you can come over here and modify your tolerance. And by modifying your tolerance, you're saying, okay, I want to accept more of this offset. It's okay to vary some. 
and here I'm saying vary up to a half a millimeter. And typically, those areas that it's going to vary are going to be those areas where there is an issue. There is an issue with the offset, as you saw here. So, by playing around with these values and these options, you can pretty much get your offset to go in sort of any condition. So I'll select OK, and there is my offset surface. Let me go ahead and uh, delete that. I'm going to put in an edge fillet along this edge. And let's see, well, I had single curve selected. I want tangent. There we go. Radius, I'll say is 10. Select OK. And this time I'm going to do an offset. Pick U. And I want to reverse this. And this is what happens when you have a fillet that can't be offset. If I bring this up to, let's say, 12, you'll see the offset still goes in, but it removes the fillet completely. So very powerful tool, very capable tool. A couple of things you should be careful of. Um, as I mentioned, the output, if you need separate faces, you want to make sure you turn that on before you make the offset. Uh, or uh, with this dynamically update exclusion list, you may actually make a modification that removes the surface or part of the face that may be necessary for a split or trim body that you used or something along those lines and then you get a failure with the trim body because that surface no longer fully uh, uh, trims the, sur the solid or other surface that you're trying to trim. Great tool. Use it cautiously. Next is a, a tool that I really like. Let me delete this. That's fine. Oops. Actually, let me delete these elements. Bring that back. Is variable offset. With variable offset, you're relatively limited to the faces you can select, as in you can only pick one face. So if I pick this face, you'll notice I don't have any tangency. I can't pick multiple surfaces. If I pick this one, it switches to that one, whatever that may be. But that being said, this gives me the capability to modify each corner independent for height. If I go into settings, I'm going to turn on keep parameterization. You'll notice that there's a little deviation here. And what this means is it's going to keep the math relative to the initial base surface. So whatever the control polygon is this, it's going to infer that and put it onto this surface as well. So it'll have the same relative math. And that's why you see a deviation occurring here off of the data. This is telling me that in order for this to keep the same math as that, I have to deviate some and where that deviation is. I have a cubic transition and you can see this it gives me an S shape value along if I turn off key parameterization, you'll see here that I get a much closer representation to a true variable offset because now I'm no longer um, stuck with the control polygon of this one face. I'm now reparameterizing this face. So if I take a look at this, I pick that and I say show poles and I pick, let's see here, this and I say show poles, you can see here I have one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. On this surface I have one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, five, six. So this surface, this new variable offset, needed to add an additional row of control points in order for it to properly perform that offset or get it as close as possible. Again, if I say keep parameterization, you'll notice that this now drops back down and I have a larger degree of variation on that surface. Again, because I'm adding curvature in this direction, I need an additional row of control points in order to meet that curvature. By turning that off, I get much closer to the final result. This is four tenths uh, of a millimeter, or four one hundredths of a millimeter. So it's basically four microns, microscopic in size. So those are your variable offsets and standard offset.